If you want to find out what are my current top five videos on this channel, then stick around. All right, let's get this out of the way. If you like the content on this channel, please consider subscribing if you're not already. And if you like the content of this video, please give it a thumbs up. That would be sweet. It's Elaine with another video, and this is super exciting because this is a collab. I am collaborating with Andra Anthony. I have her picture right here. And I will link her channel down below along with a couple of videos of hers that I am going to mention. So I'm going to take care of my favorites, my personal favorites of her videos on her channel with, I was supposed to pick one, but I just, I couldn't pick one. So I, I, I've got two for you. My favorite and then an honorable mention. Three days ago, my favorite video, the one I had picked, got bumped and it got bumped for, for a really good reason. The initial favorite video that I had for her was the three looks one palette with the uh, rainbow NYX palette, 16 shade rainbow palette. And she did a really neat cut crease look. And I thought, wow, she was really inspiring me to push my boundaries and my abilities with color. And I really appreciated that. And she had a, a really relaxed way of going about doing her eye look. And I was like, wow, I wish I could be that relaxed when I'm trying a, a new look. <laughs> Usually I'm not, I'm not very relaxed. And I thought, you know, I can learn a lot from that approach. And I really appreciated that. And also, I have to say, Andra as a, a YouTuber is super chill and she takes uh, comments really well and and it's, she seems like a very approachable, easy person to interact with. I could see myself catching a, a movie on the couch with her at some point with a tub of popcorn and drink and, and just uh, uh, having, having a, a fun time. So... Uh, that was my first one. I love her laid-back attitude. And then the second one, though, which came out just three days ago at the time I'm filming this, part of the title is My Health Slash uh, Chronic Pain. I really appreciated her sharing some a side of her that was obviously very hard to share and that she had really weighed the pros and cons of sharing it on YouTube. And it was a very powerful video. And so I will have her channel my initial favorite video and then the one that bumped it all linked below for you because I highly encourage you to go take a look at her videos. She's a very new YouTuber just as I am very new but uh, I think her content is worth it and she just looks like a very nice person and I appreciate that. Now Based on the title of this video, you know that it is not all about uh, Andra's videos. <laughs> but I wanted to make sure to give it proper attention up front. What I do want to say, though, is that I am going to share with you what my top five favorites are on this channel. Now that I have over 250 videos, I, I just, I'm looking back and I am not necessarily picking videos that are the most aesthetically pleasing, uh, the most polished and professional. What I have been drawn to when I look through all of these videos is videos that remind me of what it is that I'm trying to do on this channel in the first place and that give me food for thought personally, let alone giving other people food for thought on what I think matters when it comes to makeup, makeup applications, cosmetics in general, and, and really just being a creative person. I'm going to go from number five to number one. In fifth place is the skinny on my past troubles with makeup. And I share a little bit on why I had difficulty wearing or just couldn't wear cosmetics and a lot of skincare products and give you a little bit of a hint on why I care now about being on YouTube and being able to enjoy the makeup journey that I'm on 
when for a few decades before I couldn't really touch makeup all that much and it's um, a topic very near and dear to my heart and I have been asked to expand on that video and it is definitely one that I want to do but I want to make sure that I do it really well and be as helpful as possible so I'm I'm not quite ready to film it yet but it's coming soon at number four I have a video called weighing in on panning eyeshadow now if you have watched videos recently you would know that I am actually panning a palette this year but it's a palette that I really don't care for I don't find it aesthetically pleasing it's all mattes it's kind of boring and I can use it as a very utilitarian palette to help me enjoy my other palettes that weighing in on panning eyeshadow video was presenting my stance on panning I think if you love something you can get or should be able to get credit if you will or give yourself credit for using it without visually destroying it sooner than you need to like for example when I see somebody panning an eyeshadow they're really going after one little spot to pan but to me aesthetically the pan the the, the palette doesn't look good anymore the moment you can see pan and so for me I thought well if you know how much a, a, a palette weighs at the beginning of your penning project and you know how much how many grams of eyeshadow assuming it's relatively untouched how many grams of eyeshadow you know how much progress you're making without having to have the visual reference of, of pan you could get credit for the grams or ounces whichever your measure is that you're using just by weighing your product and that people could have their palettes looking good and really enjoying them without having to feel like they have to deface them early on just to show that they've hit pan. To me, a progressive pan has a lot more merit than digging a little tiny less than eraser head hole in, uh, in a, pa a pan where you can see that it was dug in in that specific spot. I, I just I feel bad when I see pans that have been abused that way and I call it abuse because it's not the natural way that you would use an eyeshadow. So I intend to when I'm doing projects to weigh my palettes and it was a good reminder that for the pan that palette that I'm doing I'm going to start weighing the palette because I want to practice what I want to preach to myself and I guess to others <laughs> and just have a different way of panning product. Just my two cents, take it or leave it. In third place, I did a video called Products That Spark Creativity. And I am a definite sucker for packaging. And in that video, I show you some products and some product packaging that I like to keep on hand and visual, like visual reference as I do my makeup. And that's part of why I have all my eyeshadow palettes behind me. Sometimes I love to have the visual reference behind me because I do my makeup right behind you. The mirror is right there. And to see my palettes, it makes me creative in choosing which palette I'm going to use because nothing is hidden in a drawer. And also sometimes just the packaging of a palette will give me an idea for an eye look. And so that video really talks about what it is sometimes about packaging that that inspires me to use makeup in a consistent way or in a new way or to appreciate different colors that maybe I haven't used in a while that kind of thing so um, yeah that's number three and I have some other videos that are in that kind of a topic for example I, I do have a video on on enjoying on what I really appreciate um, in packaging what I consider top quality packaging but number three is really what even spawned the idea for that other video so it's a definite solid number three. Number two is a video called Scary Makeup How Was It and it's a follow-up to an intro to Makeup That Scares Me video. Now unfortunately I only did one update which was part one and I have a part two that's far overdue but the reason I care about that video, the update, is because I ended up pushing myself to do a makeup look that I never would have had it not been for my Scary Makeup Challenge and for YouTube, really, because I would have had no one to show it to other than maybe my husband. So I appreciate the fact that that video 
expanded my comfort zone in a way that it can't go back and also invites me to do more of that kind of pushing and challenging myself. And I'm sure that that start was also the reason why a few days ago I did my first partial cut crease and different things like that. So it is a pledge to myself, if you will, that I will keep learning and keep trying products that I would otherwise, if I didn't have a channel, if I didn't venture into colorful makeup, that I would never have tried on myself. And that I'm always grateful. I'm grateful when I do do a makeup look that I've never done before. So yeah, that is again a solid, this time number two. And in honor of the video that made it to number one, I am wearing red lipstick today. I am wearing the Giorgio Armani number 400. Nice, no? The reason I picked that red is because that is a red that is featured in this number one video. And if you had told me before I looked at my 270 videos that this video would make it to number one, I would have chuckled. My favorite video was helping you find the perfect holiday red. And the reason it made it to number one was not necessarily the content of the video, which I think is helpful, no question, but it was a good reminder of one of the reasons that I started my channel, which is very much like why I put number five in number five. And that is that I want to help myself, yes. I want to push myself when it comes to makeup and skincare but I also want it to be of service to other people. And whenever I do a video that is a subscriber request or that answers a question or that tries to be proactively helpful if I haven't heard somebody's looking for something but I think I can be of assistance, it warms my heart, it makes me excited to film, and I think that's a big reward for being on YouTube in the first place. There you have it, my top five favorite videos on HMM makeup and my favorite video on Andra Anthony's channel along with an honorable mention. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I certainly had fun filming it and it's my first collab. Thank you Andra uh, for agreeing to do this with me. I think it was a lot of fun. It was nice to reminisce going back over months of video footage and trying to par down my list. And, uh, and also really enjoyed watching someone else's channel and really evaluating a number of videos and saying, which one is my favorite? Why do I like this video? Why do I like that video? I think it offered me a lot of information and I'm very grateful. So on the topic of gratitude, thank you so much for watching today's video. I appreciate it very much. I do look forward to seeing you in the next video, but for now, take care. Thank you.